What's up, YouTube? Ian Sandowski back here again for Let's Machine. First and foremost, I'd like to thank all you guys who watched my video on uh, Mastercam and Autodesk. Uh, I got a lot of really great response out of that. Um, if you haven't seen that video yet, go watch it. Let me know your thoughts. A little update on that. Um, I've been offered training and I've done one session of training on uh, Fusion 360, courtesy of D3 Technologies. Great session so far. Uh, I'm gonna do some of that in the new year as well, so it's gonna be interesting to see how that turns out. As well, I've been offered training uh, on Mastercam 2018, courtesy of in-house solutions, which are the people who we bought our software off previously, and I've done training with them as well before. Um, great company as well. So I'll keep you guys updated as to what's happening with that. Who knows, maybe my, opinion, my opinion on that will change, but that's where we're at. Today, we're gonna be working on some bronze, or sorry, brass milling. Uh, we're gonna mill some long profiles out of brass. These things are gonna be about 90 inches long. These are for a really high-end door in New York City, uh, in Manhattan. These are gonna be the rails that some panels are gonna sit between. So they're long, they're skinny, and they're brass. Um, I know there's gonna be some challenges in these with chatter. There's probably gonna be some challenges with warping as well. So, uh, you're gonna have to take a look at how we're gonna do that. But let's go upstairs. Let's take a look at how we're gonna program this, okay? Let's go. Here we go. We're gonna do some long brass profiles today. So my profile that I'm gonna be cutting looks like, we're doing this in Mastercam 2018, as I said, like this from the side. So this is actually two pieces we're doing at once. Um, it looks like this on one side and like this on the other. Um, imagine a cut 120 thou out of the middle of this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do basically two profiles at once and then cut them in half on a table saw. The reason we're doing this is to make it easier to hold and hopefully to get some more rigidity in it while we're milling it. Um, obviously if we're milling something that you know is maybe half inch by half inch by 90, it's gonna be very difficult to keep that flat straight. We're gonna have to make some fixturing, etc. If we do two at once, um, this should lead to less problems. So first things first, we gotta mill the back. We gotta mill those slots out. Using a 3 8 end mill on it, we're just going and cutting it out. I wanna make sure it's nice and accurate, so uh, I'm going to be doing a couple sprint, uh, finish passes and everything in there, which you can see, because uh, it just is over 3 8 wide. And then I'm going down and just chamfering those outsides this says quarter inch chamfer mill. I'm actually using a number nine tool. If you ever seen one of those, it's like a carbide insertable um, chamfer mill that way. So after you do that, we're gonna, so I only have 60 inch travel inside my Haas VF5, right? So this is a 59 inch section just because I have lead ins and lead outs on it. Um, you can see also here, one thing that's handy, I like to use this for um, jobs such as these. Actually, I didn't do it here, but it's got a straight lead in lead out. When I do my second one, I use a ramp, let me show you. So I'm gonna, sorry, as I was saying, um, I'm doing one section at 16 inches, then I'm gonna move it and do the rest. Um, you know, pretty standard operating procedure for this kind of thing. So when I go to my next profile here, let me turn off my um, stuff here. Right. What I did to make this easy, I just extruded this profile as a solid. Um, working from solids in Mastercam is, is uh, really nice. I like working from solids. I don't like working from surfaces, as you've heard from some of my videos. Um, solids where applicable when you can use them is great because uh, you can very easily select edges um, you know you, you, relative depths are nice right everything is kind of uh, incremental movements that way uh, you don't need to give any absolute depths for anything that way and for stuff with angles and stuff like this sometimes that's good so what we're doing here we are going to mill out this profile first we're going to let me get you a view here just pick this up we're gonna use that same 3 8 end mill to rough it out and then finish these profiles inside. As you can see here, this is ramping in straight. I like doing this so we don't get any gouges. Um, that's really easy to do. You just go into my lead in, lead out. It is right here, ramp height, ramp length. Um, I'm just ramping in a 50 thou over 3 8 length. I like to do that, it works pretty well. Um, obviously you can see I have multi-passes turned on, finish pass. I also have a depth gun on my finish pass, which I may, may or may not need, but I'm gonna leave it anyway. We're not in a huge rush to do these, and I just wanna make sure um, this turns out really nice because this is all show face. After that, the way I'm doing that angle, um, obviously I could use a ball nose or something of the like to finish it, but I really wanna make sure I get a nice finish there, and I wanna do it and not take hours upon hours upon hours to do it. Um, you know, it's one thing to not be in a huge rush, it's another thing to not wanna kill the job. So what I got made was a 
5 8 diameter 30 degree end mill because this is a 30 degree angle here so this angle here is just under quarter inch uh, or sorry it's about quarter inch maybe a little more so to make sure I have lots of travel in there to work with uh, lots of you know cutting face to work with I got it made at 5 8 just so I got a, a little bit of room for error there so you can see it's gonna be stepping down it's ramping in a little bit as well um, not ramping very much but that's okay and it's doing some finished passes and then to make sure I got a nice finished pass uh, it's gonna do a couple of spring passes or finished passes at uh, about five thou each I believe just to make sure that surface there which is a very very um, open surface uh, show face there I want to make sure it's really nice so we're gonna do lots of finish passes there and a couple spring passes just so there's any chatter in there it will take it out so you can see my tool paths end up looking like this okay let's go run this inside the machine So as you can see from that piece upstairs, when we tried to cut this, this thing just banana out. Um, our process for this was to mill the profile out and then cut it on a table saw. Um, so you get two profiles out of one, that way you get less chatter, it's more rigid when you're cutting it, etc. Um, brass apparently has a whole lot of stress in it, or this brass does anyway. So what we did, we sent this out for stress relieving. Uh, I'm not too sure about the process for stress relieving brass. Somebody told me once that it's the opposite of hardening or annealing steel. When you anneal steel, you make it hot and then you let it cool slowly to anneal it most of the time. With this, apparently, you make it hot and then you shock it cold and that makes it softer. I don't know if that's true or not. I've literally never even Googled it, so probably a Google search could prove me right or wrong, but that's what I've heard. If you're interested, look it up. Um, Try to sample of this after getting a stress relief, it's much better. Uh, it doesn't move around anymore. Before, when I mill out those two slots on the back, which are only 60 thou deep, the whole thing will come out like a banana. Um, and obviously when I mill the front, you saw it went like this, like a wishbone. That's not gonna be acceptable. These things need to be at least fairly straight. So, now we're gonna put some of this product in and run some full lines over. So there you have it guys, um, that's how we're going to mill some long brass profiles inside the Haas Automation VF5 vertical mount. A um, couple other profiles we're going to do with this, I'm not going to film them all, you know I can't really show you how we do everything here, but uh, this is a pretty standard thing that we do a lot here at Lakewood. Um, we do a lot of long brass and bronze profiles. If I wanted to take chatter out of this, you can see obviously behind me when you're seeing that mill, there's some space between the vices. I do a lot of spring passes because that's just how I like to get finished anyway. So the chatter doesn't really matter. It really takes it out that way because the cuts are so light at the bottom there. 
The solution if you're getting shattered for doing something like this is either to have a long fixture you put in there, you know, a solid fixture that you either strap clamp your, your piece down to or you clamp it in there, or something that's gonna give it more rigidity, or you move your, your uh, vice is closer together. Uh, that way it's holding in more spots, it's more rigid that way. Um, again, that's kind of something you have to do based on feel. Hope this has been helpful guys. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can always leave them below or you can email me, letsmachine at gmail.com. Uh, and as always, make sure you like and subscribe below if you want to see more videos. Thank you very much guys, you take care.